Many Americans are tightening their belts as the cost of everyday goods continue to rise. Updated consumer price index data released this week shows the Phoenix metro area has the unfortunate honor of experiencing the highest rate of inflation in the nation, a 13% increase over the past year. Over that time period, the cost of eggs and meat has gone up almost 18%. Rent is up over 21%, and gasoline is up nearly 33%. We spent a day in Arizona with a single mother to see how she's navigating some tough financial choices. In order for me to stay afloat and, you know, do what needs to be done, I've definitely had to cut back on a lot of different things. Claudia Hernandez and her eight-year-old daughter, Isabella, live in the Phoenix metro area where inflation feels inescapable as it touches nearly every aspect of life. People were like, you could sell your house for a half a million dollars. And I'd say, yes, and what would I do? I wouldn't be able to buy anything with $500,000. Carton of eggs used to be like, you know, $2.50, and now they're like $5. I try to not fill up more than once a week because it really throws up my budget. Claudia cut back on her driving to save money on gas, but it still costs her about $60 a week to fill up her tank. She says that she needs to be strategic with how often and where she drives. And if I have errands, I try to run an errand and do multiple things at once. The mother-daughter duo have also changed their grocery shopping habits to account for higher price points, buying only what they need for the week. Before COVID, my freezer was full to the rim. Adding to these financial challenges is Claudia's desire to make sure her daughter doesn't feel deprived. So she had to get creative. Instead of going out to eat when Isabella gets good grades, they've started a new tradition at a local thrift store. We go what we call treasure hunting. And so we, that's how we celebrate. I give her a few dollars and then she goes treasure hunting. Cutting back like this is hard, but Claudia's financial goals are clear. We may not always have everything that we want, but my number one priority is to make sure that we do have everything that we need. To make ends meet, she has taken on side jobs, shared parenting responsibilities with other moms, and taken personal finance classes. Some of these lifestyle changes have been met with enthusiasm. Isabella, what do you think about mommy cooking at home more? Mm, I like it. Yeah, what do you like? I like that the food's delicious and that you don't have to pay. But others have been more challenging. The hardest part, I think, is not being able to go see our family in Mexico. One place where Claudia has found support is the nonprofit Dress for Success. It's a global organization providing women with free outfits for jobs and interviews. It's also a career center that offers classes in resume writing and salary negotiation. I have developed these relationships with these women that are all aspiring to be better, and it inspires me. The most important thing is for women to know that they have support and that they've got cheerleaders. Claudia is feeling hopeful for the future, in part due to the support she receives through other families in the same predicament. So we have to enjoy the moments that we have and know that the bad times that we have are going to pass, right? We're going to get through it. And Claudia is here with us now in Studio 57. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, hearing your story, I just, it reminded me of elements of my own childhood because I was raised by a single mother and, you know, there wasn't always a ton of money. And she was very clear about the restrictions, but once again, didn't make me feel deprived. And I thought it was so interesting because you're sort of trying to teach your daughter there's a difference between wants and needs. I almost feel like with my daughter, that ship has sailed, right? Because I know that if I say, is this chocolate a want or a need? She's going to say it's a need. So how do you, your daughter's young. How do you teach her that? Well, you know, I want her to make sure that she understands that we have choices to make, right? And I try to tell her, you know, if you choose this, then you're choosing not to do something else. Mm. And by understanding that process, I'm not just helping her today. I'm making her to make choices, helping her to make choices in the future, yeah. right? And so I tell her, I can't make you do your homework. This is your choice. Do you want to have good grades in school or do you not want to have good grades in school? Right. And then those choices, you know, translate to other things because every choice that we make has a consequence. And by understanding that, then we know, okay, well, today do I want to spend money on something that doesn't mean much to me 
or do I want to save money so that I can buy something that's worthwhile? And she has a piggy bank and she gets, you know, to make those choices for her, you know, and if she wants something like she wanted a dollhouse and I told her I can't afford it, but if you want to earn extra money, you can make that choice, mm -hmm. right? And so we had, she went and walked people's dogs and she helped really? do chores. Yes. And she bought her own dollhouse. And I got to tell you, she takes care of that dollhouse a lot more than if she would have taken care of it if I had bought it for her and yeah. given it to her because it means more. It means that she took the time to earn the money yeah. and she savors it. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It really does. Yeah. Um, how do you navigate childcare as a working mom? As Anne Marie pointed out, Ooh, I mean, both so of us had, expensive. it was hard. My mom would sometimes have to pay like a high school kid to pick me up from school to take me to yeah. a babysitter or to take me to uh, after daycare um, when I was even younger. And I can only imagine what it was like, especially back then we didn't have cell phones to connect with children. So you're basically, it's a wing and a prayer. You're paying some 17 year old kid in a Trans Am to pick me up. Right. Right. Some, somehow and, we oh, survived. Right. Somehow I made it to yeah. where I'm able to be here with you. So but, what's it like for now in 2022? Because yeah. it's, ex it's expensive. People it have no idea. It is very expensive. So during the summer, there is no school. And I had to beg my boss to let me work from home because it was going to cost me $250 a week to have her just go to camp. Mm -hmm. And that's $1,000 a month, and mm -hmm. I just can't afford that. And so I had to say, you know, if you want me to stay in this job, I need to be able to work from home. But what I always tell everybody is that you need a circle of friends, of, you know, family members, or, you know, have a, a phone line that you can yeah. call because, you know, I have an emergency at work, my battery dies, you know, you name it, right? Life happens. So you need to create that network of, of people that can help you and that you can help them mm -hmm. so that you can get through it, right? I have other single moms that, you know, they have me as a backup for their kid and I have them as a backup for my kid. I mean, I'm here today celebrating Dress for Success uh, worldwide, their 25th anniversary. She needs to be in school in Arizona. Mm -hmm. I had a single mom friend that helped me and picked her up, and they're having a sleepover. Mm -hmm. and, you wow. know, they're taking her to school. I have another friend that's taking her to the airport tonight. You know, you need those uh, relationships yeah. to be able to support you so that you can be great and they can be great. You need yeah. your village. Yes, right? it's I, very important. You know, just speaking about childcare, I mean, when I say people don't know, I remember when, you know, we had to send my kid to nursery school and it was almost the same as my mortgage. Mm. And I, I thought to myself, well, like if you have more than one child, yes. I don't know how you do it, you know? And, and gone are the days of the kid in the Trans Am, <laughs> you know, like, because they, they're charging big bucks too. Right, yes. <laughs> um, can we talk about your grocery bill? Oof. What did you know? Where did you notice the biggest change? You know, the basics, you know, eggs, milk, uh, cheese, meats, those are all gone right. up. You know, the, the food that's on sale that's inexpensive is the bad stuff, the junk, the processed food. But all the essentials, the, the things that we need, mm -hmm. those are the things that are really going up. And that's and, a big, that, that's what, you know, oftentimes um, economists and social scientists see, which is, you know, we talk about the things that make sometimes life in this country difficult, lack of access to health care. People are, you know, uh, there are people who are not he eating healthily, but it's not because they don't want to eat healthy or they right. don't have family members and parents and loved like ones they who know want. What they healthy know food what is. healthy food is, yeah. but if you can't access it or you can't afford it, and it's, you know, to buy some milk and to buy some eggs, it costs way more than buying a can of, like, canned pasta. Right. You're going to buy that highly processed canned pasta because you got to put right. food on the table. And, you know, I remember once doing a story on a supermarket in a food desert. You know, we talk about where, you know, neighborhoods that don't have supermarkets and then they had one. And this woman that I spoke to had a cart filled with frozen pizza. Mm. Oh. And I said to her, oh, that's a lot of pizzas there. And she said, look, I got paid. You know, if I buy bananas, they're going to go bad. I'm going to stock my fridge up. I know my kids are going to eat this, and it's not going to go bad. It's going to last me for, you know, three weeks. And I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's tough choices, but you're doing a remarkable job. Thank it's you. so inspira inspirational uh, watching you. The organization, Address for Success, is a great organization. If you have extra suits or dresses, you should look for, you know, in, in, your, in your neighborhood, in your city. Um, and, Claudia, we really appreciate you sharing your story. Thank you. And thank you. I mean, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. 
it's it's an honor to be here. No, so it's thank an honor you. for us to talk to you because yeah. you're representative of what so many Americans are struggling with right now. And to have your story shared with our audience um, is incredibly important because it gives perspective to it, it's sometimes you watch the news and you see, oh, the market went down or you know, the economy is not doing well. But for real for, for people who are dealing with it in real time, mm -hmm. um, this is this is why we're here. Mm -hmm. This is why you're here, I should say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.